Hello and welcome back to another episode of Talking More Show. And what is blatantly obvious from if you're watching this video right now is I'm not on my own this week. I'm joined by Raggy from the podcast and young Ben How from you? the podcast. How's are you two doing? Morning. Yeah, good. Good. Lockdown still. Bit of cabin fever, but got to be done, hasn't it? That's it. And uh, obviously, it's an early one. Um, just below the shot of the camera where we are now. I'm still in my pyjamas, but uh, it's, it's these little sacrifices we had to make to get our guest on, all the way from sunny Melbourne, Australia, <laughs> former Legion United centre-back, Paddy Kiznovo. So welcome to Talking Shop, Paddy. How are you? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good, uh, obviously, uh, with uh, what's going on around the world. Um, like you said, a bit of cabin, fe cabin fever, but yeah, we're doing okay, and the, the family and all that's safe, so that's the main thing at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm sure you're probably getting the weather as well, Paddy, although is it edging, edging towards winter in Australia at the moment? Yeah, it's heading towards winter. We've had a nice couple of days, but I'm sure as uh, the months and weeks go on, it's just going to get worse. Yeah, well, we, we've, we've had a bit of nice weather us, over here, but it looks a bit cloudy looking out my window today. It's probably um, probably linked to the fact that I'm not at work today and I were yesterday, so that might be a bit. <laughs> they were cracking anyway, crack the flags yesterday. <laughs> I know, mate. I kept looking out the office window thinking, oh, I wish I were out there. But anyway, by the by. Uh, so, Paddy, uh, football, Australia, and then ending up in Scotland, how did that come about? Sorry, can you just repeat that? Sorry. Yeah, so football, Australia, and then ending up at Heart of Middle Ovian in Scotland. How did that come about? Yeah, um, well, it was, it was pretty quick, to be honest. Um, obviously, uh, I, I used to play, obviously, in the local league here. Um, back then, it was formerly known as the NSL. Um, and I, I came across a guy called uh, Dave McPherson, who I played against in, in, a, in a rival team. Um, and obviously, when he left uh, Australia, he went to Scotland. And the the person that was representing me at the time obviously brought Dave McPherson to uh, to Melbourne. Um, and when he knew that, um, obviously, I was sort of out of contract here, you know, he said, you know, w would I come uh, to trial in Scotland? And obviously, it's every it's every kid's dream to, to play, you know, abroad, especially in Australia, because um, we're so far away, um, and to play at the highest level. And, and that's what I did. Um, I had a few trials at Dundee, United, Dunfermline and Inverness. Um, and I was just waiting on answers. Uh, Inverness was a, a definitely yes. Um, but I, I didn't want to, to drop down a division. Um, so I was just waiting on Dundee United and, and Dunfermline. Uh, and then Hearts came along and two days later, I, I, I signed. So um, I went from you know a kid from melbourne to obviously gonna play in the in the scottish premier league the you know, the following year how much of a culture shock were it paddy from australia to scotland that say a bit sorry Is it working again? Yeah, mate, you're back in the room. Yeah, um, we're just saying Sorry. how much how much of a culture shock were it from um, from Australia to Scotland? How much were different with the lifestyle? I would imagine quite a lot. Yeah, it, it, it was massive. You know, I know we all speak English, but the I didn't really understand a lot. Um, obviously, the weather uh, coming from you know uh, sunny Melbourne, the, the weather was was crazy. Uh, I remember one story that. It was Christmas and it was snowing, and I got a phone call, and the gaffer's like, "Where are you?" I'm like, "Oh, it's Christmas Day, you know, it's snowing out there." He goes, "You know, get your ass to training. We're training." So it was <laughs> it was crazy, you know what I mean? So, but these are the the things that you learn from a naive, you know, nineteen year old. Um, but look, it was a fantastic experience in Edinburgh, um, at a great place and a great club. Yeah, and then uh, you found your way to Leicester after that. Um... What were yep. your time like at Leicester? Because obviously now I think for, for people of a certain generation, they see Leicester as Premier League winners and, you know, Jamie Vardy and, you know, the, the current Leicester team of now. What, what were your experience at Leicester when you went there? Yeah, it, it was a, I think it was a transition time. Um, obviously, Craig Levine went there and he brought me there. Um, and they just sort of were getting relegated into the championship. Um, so 
it was a bit turbulent. You know, we had I had a lot of managers. Um, the ownership was changing, um, but it was a great club to play for. Um, some great fans, uh, and it, it 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 was good. You know, it was a good step for me, especially you know coming to to English soccer, um, and, and it was a great club. Yeah, uh, what well, Max Gradle there at the time as well. Yeah, 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 Max. Yeah, so obviously uh, when I was at Leeds, uh, Simon Grayson, Grayson asked for, you know, if the if play would come, and you know, I I recommended Max Gradle straight away because um, my time at Leicester we were very close, um, and look, he he is he's a genuine player. Obviously, with the career that he's had uh, thus far, um, yeah, and me and him were we still remain friends to this day. Excellent. And then, obviously, the bit that we'll focus on the most, you found yeah. your way uh, <laughs> up the road to uh, up the road to Ellen Road. Uh, how did the move to Leeds come about? Yeah, look, um, I, I was out of I was out of contract at at at, uh, at Leicester, um, and there was a few Championship clubs that you know that I could have signed for, um, and Simon Grayson. Uh, rang me because he, he worked with uh, a guy named Ian Miller, um, who, who at, at that time was at Leicester. So I knew of him um, and I literally got the call from Simon saying, listen, you know, what are you doing? We'd love to have you down at, at Leeds. To Leeds, uh, I met the gaffer, um, looked at the facility and I knew that it was the, cl the club for me at that time of my career, even though I dropped down, you know, to League One. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think one of the biggest talking points, and probably when you speak to Leeds fans, they always ask about Paddy Kisnobo and the the now famous bandage is always mentioned. And I think a bit that's always forgot is you got that in your debut against Exeter. Um, so what can you remember about the incident that led yep. to 12 stitches? Yeah, look, I went for a challenge in the air and obviously we collided heads and, you know, I went to the ground and the next thing I looked at my hand and it was just covered in blood. Um, as we know, as a centre half, you, you, you're bound to either get a broken nose or a cut head. And it, to be fair, it was just part and parcel of, you know, you know, doing the job. Um, it was just put some Vaseline, strapped my head up and off we went again. Um, but the bandage still gone because I had an international um, game with uh, against Ireland that very weekend. So after the Exeter game, I had to go away with Australia. So because I had stitches in there, I had to wear the bandage or else I couldn't play. And I, I, I stuck with it, to be honest. <laughs> did, it be, did it become like a superstition thing then after a bit? Uh, not really. I, I just, like, I think football is a bit funny. Um, not a superstition, but, you, you know, people get strappings and there's nothing wrong with them. That was pretty much sort of that thing with me, you know. I, I didn't need it after a while, but because, uh, you know, I, I felt comfortable and because I saw people in the crowd wear it, I thought, well, you know, hang on a minute, I'll just keep rolling with it, you know, and, and that's what I did. Brilliant. Um, I, I read somewhere... It, and, it uh, definitely became iconic. <laughs> definitely. It was brilliant. Yeah, definitely. Um, we, we did a... Us guys and... Um, Ben Parker, your old teammate, did a yeah. um, a, le a League One special uh, from the promotion season um, for the Supporters Trust back in Leeds, and right. uh, we we got talking about uh, yourself and we got talking about your 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 bandage. Is it true that you rejected plastic surgery through fear of losing your place in the team, or is that uh, urban legend? Yeah, no, that, that, that's true. Um, I, I didn't want, I didn't want to lose my place in the team, um, and I had a. If you like, if you took the bandage off, there was a, like a massive sort of dent and hole in my head, um, and, and I didn't want to lose my spot. So, in the day, I thought, well, I'm, I'm just going to play on with it, and, and who cares? Uh, yeah, but I didn't want to lose, especially at that time, I didn't want to lose my position in the team because it meant so much playing for for the players and obviously the club. So, I didn't really care what happened to me after that. That's why I just wore the, I didn't I didn't want to get surgery. Yeah. Uh, so, Paddy, if you could like summarise that your time at Leeds with obviously the League One promotion season, um, how would yeah. you summarise it personally? Look, uh, obviously, you know, it, it's probably I reminisce about that season probably the most that I've ever done in in anything I've done in football. Um, 
you know, it, it was it was a, a great time with a great team, um, a turbulent ending, um, but a, a, how can I say a, a perfect a perfect ending, if if that made sense. You know, we, we had such a great year, um, and then obviously we came to a little hiccup, and then um, to end it the way. It ended with obviously Johnny scoring and you know Jermaine scoring the winner with ten men, you know with eight minutes to go, whatever it was. Um, you couldn't you couldn't write you couldn't write it. Uh, it's, it's a perfect script, and I think it's one. Um, it's it's one thing. I think that season will never be forgotten with a, the big history that Leeds have. Um, I think that ending and that season won't be forgotten because uh, it it was just a. a uh, bizarre but so tra traumatic end with a great finish, you know. Um, which, which again, if you look at Leeds now, which was if, if if you think about it, which was the the stepping block to where they are now, because we got promoted to the championship, um, and which they obviously currently are. But I know they will get promoted now. But you know, I think that the fight that was you know the the pinnacle of the club in terms of going the next level. Till hopefully you know the Premier League. Yeah, definitely. Because I think once we dropped out of the Premier League, it became a real sticking point getting out of League One. We found it harder than I think a lot of people thought we would do. Yeah, and I think you know, obviously, I was at Leicester at the time uh, when you know, obviously, there was financial problems at the club, and you know, you got you you got deducted the points and all this sort of stuff. Um, so it, it, it's people think you know because you're at a big club that it's easy it's easily said than done but but it ain't you actually need to go out there and perform um and and i think that year that's what we did we performed at every level when when you came in that <clears> season obviously that was the third season we'd started in league one yeah and you said you obviously you met the uh you met simon grace and was the ambition there from from grace and everyone there that this is the year this is when when we're going to do it Did you, or i think was it just i think maybe in his head it, it was the year um for you know he obviously he's made the intentions clear you know obviously we, they want to go up which is obviously the, 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 that's what happened um but also i think it was the intention of the players that came in, we also want to go up. We didn't want to just sit there and play League One football. You know, we, you know, we wanted to be, you know, obviously get promoted in the championship and get promoted in the, to the Premiership. I think that was the idea. Um, you know, but I, I think the I think the intentions were for everyone that came in that year, including that were, that were present. That this was the year that we needed to that we needed to do something and do something very special because obviously there is pressure with. The, the, the Leeds badge and and but you know what what a fantastic pressure that is yeah but I mean it's funny you should mention that because we it, it comes up time after time where we talk to we talk to Leeds based broadcasters and and ex players and, and current players and yeah the the weight of the white shirt is something that comes up time and time again it is that something you definitely recognize like playing in front of you know it was League One football but we weren't a League One club, you know, the crowds that yeah. we were having and the expectation there. Is that something you'd not experienced before? I, I, I think in hindsight, when you look out, when I look over it, you know, like it, it's like, like you said, the, there is so much expectation at that club because of what they've done in the past that again, at that time that they, they weren't a League One team. And when I was there, I actually didn't feel like at a League One club. I actually felt like at a premiership club. But obviously, you need to do the business by getting promoted. Um, but in person with me, is when I put that white shirt on. When I put that shirt on, it was you know graft. It was hard work. It was being honest. It was you know working as hard as you can for the team and the fans. And then if you won, bonus. You know, and, and to be fair, also we had we had a lot of we had a lot of great people um, and great um, plays there. That had that ethic, you know, and and I was watching. To be fair, I was watching um, uh, the the season of that year, um, and I remember um, Rob Snodgrass was saying, you know, you know, with the gaffer signings that he brought in this year, he meant business, and, and that's what it was, and that's what it felt like, like that we came in yeah. to to win and and to get the the, the team promoted. Yeah, because what had happened that a couple of seasons before that, there'd been a huge transition. There'd been a lot of players come through the club, 
a lot of players yeah. who were very successful at League One level and, yeah. and, and lower down, and they just crumbled when they came to Leeds. Just absolutely yeah. crumbled. And you know, and obviously you you, you mentioned there you dropped down a level a, a league from from Leicester to come to us, but you could just clearly tell that you were. You were a player who was going to graft and, and, and put his body on the line and everything. And that's all that Leeds fans really want. <laughs> you know. and, and, that's, but, and that's what I found out, obviously, during pre-season. Um, it, it, you know, obviously playing the practice games and, you know, for me, there's no such thing as a practice game. So you just play like normal. Um, and hmm. what, what, I, what I found out very quickly that if you really work for, that, for, the, for the club and the players for 90 minutes... Um, you know, I think Leeds and I think a lot of football fans accept you because you're playing for that shirt, which so many fans, you know, if you look at the current age, so many fans, you know, work so hard just to get, just to watch 90 minutes of football and they do it week after week after week, paycheck by paycheck. So the, 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 the least thing you can do is, you know, work as hard as you can for those, for those fans that actually come and watch and support um, their team. We've, we've talked about the, the weight of the shirt and the, the kind of demand that comes with playing for Leeds United, but obviously playing under Simon Grayson, being a Leeds fan himself, do you think that kind of helped him or helped the squad manage expectations and deal with the pressures because he also kind of feels it as well? Yeah, I think so. I, I think I think if you support, like we say, you know, the, the gaffer, you know, if you support something, I think it's a bit more in you to do more, to do well, yeah. um, because you don't want to let anyone down. Um, and, and and that's and and that's for me that that's what I sort of I think that's what the gaffer instilled in the players, you know that that this is not just any other team or any other club in football in England. This is you know Leeds United, uh, uh, you know a proud history. Um, and 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 one thing that I never done, I'd I'd play with players that were actually Leeds supporters, and I've never had that in my career, and. <laughs> To, to so when they spoke about Leeds, you could actually see what it meant to them, um, and you didn't want to let that, those players down because obviously it meant so much for them for playing for their you know their their, their club as well. Paddy, just on on that team of that promotion, did you really realise how good some of the players in that team or as a team were? Because I mean, if we look at some of the careers post that, obviously Johnny Owson, Bradley Johnson, Jimmy Beckford all went on to play in the Premier League. You know, you had yourself as a full international, Rob Snodgrass as a full international. You know, um, did you really realise what you were involved in at the time? Or is it kind of when you look back after that? I mean, it, it's for us, obviously, we got so close as well in the Championship the year after. But it's only yeah. now, sort of years later, that you look back at that side and go, actually, you know, we were actually a really, really good footballing team. Yeah, like, w when you look at it, I think, and that, this is no disrespect to... The, the current players now, I think we had a better bunch of players in League One than the players in Championship. I, I, I think, especially individually and maybe collective. You know, I, I think I think as a team, you know, and obviously I got injured in that, but I think we could have done a lot more, especially in the Championship, especially getting promoted. Um, and, and that's sort of a regret, or not a regret, but something that bugs me. Um, still to this day, because I think that that team there, if it didn't get, you know, sort of people go here and people go there, I think that team eventually could have been a top, top team. And if you look at the individuals now, and you, you mentioned them all, man, they're all premiership players um, that have played at the highest level, internationals, and we were all together based in a League One team. Um, and who would yeah. ever think of that, you know, back then? You know, and so I, I think, you know, I was very fortunate. And I think there's, there's plays when you look at them now, I think collectively, maybe individually, I think we're better than the, the team that are currently now. But obviously the team that are currently now are having a fantastic season. And, and that's so much respect to them because, you know, they're doing something that we didn't get to achieve. And I really hope the guys now really achieve that. Yeah, um, we've interviewed a few of the people in and around that team, uh, Ben Parker, David Prutton, Andy Hughes, uh, and I, I was lucky enough to have a chat with Jermaine Beckford at Ellen Road a bit ago, and the one thing that struck me with all of them, and yourself included, is um, 
both both the the pride in the job that they needed to do at Leeds because as you rightly said you know Leeds fans love the hard work putting your body on the line giving 100 percent every every day week in week out but the other thing that strikes me all of them is they're all massive characters so just talking about the characters of that team you know um what, what were it like in and around the dressing room um sort of from a, a banter point of view yeah i think we all fit off each other you know um you, you had johnny who you know was you had johnny you had jermaine myself you had brad but you had all these players with different um how can i say experiences different banter but it all worked you know we all congregated together i i, I think the i think what really um that really made it work was because we wanted to win so bad together it didn't matter what happened we're always together so you know like if you speak like Husey, Husey, you know it was uh one of those characters that in football i'll never forget and that chemistry between someone that was quiet worked you know you had an aussie that didn't really know anyone it worked you know i think because we had the we were so close in that dressing room because we the achievement that we wanted to do was so high that you know it, it didn't matter what happened um we we all got along and i think that added to us achieving what we did because we were not only working for the fans but we we're working for each other no one wanted to let each other down no matter what so um i think that played a big part in that season yeah definitely um obviously this is probably a, a daft question but um a tinge of sadness we lead career in terms of injuries because you had some pretty serious injuries in 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 the time that you're at Leeds. you know is is that you know is that when you look back at your career at leeds one of the, the saddest sort of sides of it yeah look i i think if you if you look at that year um personally i, I thought I was, I was having a fantastic year um and uh you know i was going to a world cup all this sort of stuff you know at that time you know we we're going to get promoted with leeds um, I was already looking at the championship thinking, you know what, we're going to get promoted again. We're going to do the double. Um, and then, you know, you, you snap your Achilles. Um, and it, it, it's a horrific injury, you know. And that that's the saddest thing, I think, personally for me. And, and still to start thinking about it, that, you know, I didn't achieve what I really wanted to with Leeds. Um, I really wanted to go the whole way with Leeds. Um, uh, but I didn't get a chance to. So that was really difficult for me to swallow and um and accept but obviously time heals and um yeah it, it, it's a difficult it's a difficult one because i really want to be honest with you i in it might sound a bit selfish but i really want to become a, a club legend there with a lot of the plays because of that's what i felt at that club I, I felt like home um so i wanted to be that one one of the people like obviously jermaine's One with Chan or you know, Johnny House, and I want to become a um, So we've lost Paddy for the time being. We'll uh, <laughs> we'll attempt to tag him back in. Technology is not our friend today, uh, for sure. But somebody go yeah. check that cable down to Australia. <laughs> yeah, I'm say, can you find it? Um, I think he's just trying to reconnect right now. So rather than us fill time, we'll add him back in. Paddy, welcome back. Are you there? <laughs> yeah, mate. Here we are. Yeah, sorry, just yeah, we lost you. I think. There's some serious technical issues here. Nope. Can you hear me? Yeah, I think you're back, mate. Oh, back and all, off and on. Are you now? Yeah, you're back in. You're back in. I think. I think. I think you're back. Okay. 
<laughs> Technology, yeah. Yeah, so did you hear what I, what I was saying or did it just cut out? No, no, we got you where you wanted to be a club legend and you mentioned Johnny and uh, Jermaine and Luciano and people yeah. like that. Because they've been there the year before, you know, you, you want to be part of that. And I want to be part of history. Um, even though I was part of history, obviously, you know, by getting promoted and being Man United um, at Old Trafford, I wanted more because, um, yeah, that, that was my drive. I always wanted more. Um, and not, not like in a selfish way, but I wanted more as a collective, you know, to be part of a team that, you know, got to the Premier League, you know, so... It, it, so obviously it that's kind of, yeah. Obviously that's that's kind of like a, a hindsight looking back, and obviously there's, there's regret there. Obviously nothing you can do with being injured, but at the time, obviously a professional player, us three would have loved to have been professional players, nowhere near good enough. But yeah. as a professional player, obviously your whole career, everything, your whole life is geared up to to go out there on a Saturday and play football. What? How do you get through that when you are injured? You know, whether that's a short term injury or with yourself, obviously yep. you miss. Virtually the entire next season, didn't you? Twenty ten to eleven, I think you came yeah. on the last game of the season. How does that yeah. feel? Like, what, what do you go through on a kind of day to day basis? Yeah, I, I think it's you get through a whole range of emotions. Um, you know, with with me, you know, I got told that I'd never play again. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, so I, actually, my injury was quite bad, quite severe, um, but. You, you, you try and you, you try and do the best you can in certain times, and again, you, you, you know, mentally you go up and down. Like it, whatever people say, if they the line to you, if they say yeah, everything was smooth sailing, because you know you, you always think, hey, will I get to my best? Will I be back to the same player? Can I do this? Can I do that? Because with every injury, it, 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 there's always a setback somewhere. You know, so you start questioning yourself. Um, but, you know, the, I think it comes to a point where you think, okay, well, enough's enough. Well, you, you need to work and give it everything you got. And, 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 and that's what I did, especially with the long-term injury. Um, that's what I had to do. And, you know, you read books and you speak to your teammates and um, you, you try and do everything possible you can that when you do come on the pitch, you're ready. Um, but sometimes nothing prepares you for an injury, an injury of that calibre because – you know, you, you've just missed out on so much of football in terms of, you know, promotion, World Cups, that it's sometimes difficult to, to accept and swallow. But you, you've got to move on and, you know, you've got to try and, you know, adapt and next, make the... So after after England, then Paddy, you went back to to Melbourne, um, yeah, and, and captained Melbourne City. Was that was that a big thing for you? The, it was just a big thing playing football again. Um, Some technical difficulties again, aren't we? I think, I think so. so. Ben, go check that wire again to Australia. <laughs> I think he's back. Back Got again, buddy. Like. <laughs> there we go. Is that better? Yes, mate. You're back. You're back. Hello. Hi, mate. Yeah. You back? Yeah, yeah, back. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um. Yeah. In response to your question, I think it was great to just to come back and, and play football again. Um. And you know, I got a couple of years extra. Uh. That I wanted sort of out of my long but sort of shortish career due to injury. Um. So it's just great to get on the park again and yeah, and kick a ball and stuff like that. 
Yeah, so uh, tell us what you're doing now then, Paddy. Now you officially retired from uh, football in the 1st of May 2016, according to yep. um, the Oracle that is Wikipedia. Uh, so yep. <laughs> what, what, what's life like for Paddy Kiznobo now? Yeah, so now I'm a, I'm a coach. Um, I'm coach. I'm the assistant coach of the first team. Um, so, you know, I've did all sort of my due diligence with uh, – I coached the, the academy and we won – um I, twice coached the girls and we won twice um so now i'm with the the the, the first team and i'm the assistant with a, a great coach called uh eric mumbayet who um coached paris saint germain he's a fantastic coach he's with the cfg the city group um and i'm learning so much of him so i think the next sort of path is is coaching which i've always wanted to do um so yeah it, it's 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 been great um it's difficult at times, but it's something that I, I love doing. Would um, Would you ever consider coming back to England to pursue your coaching, or are you yeah, quite happy yeah. where you are? No, of course. Like as a player, you always want to play. You always want to play at the highest level. At the coach, you always want to coach at the highest level. So, you know, if I had an opportunity to get back to England in some capacity, you know, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Paddy, just one other point, slightly off topic. Yep. But, um, how do you see yep. uh, Australian football at the moment? Because obviously through our lifetimes, we've seen yourself, we've seen Harry Kuehl, we've seen Matt Viduka, we've seen Tim Cale, we've seen yep. more recently Aaron Moy. But do you think that um, Australian football is still sort of yet to boom, if you like? Um, how, how do you sort of yeah. see the Australian football uh, as it is? Yeah, it, it's quite difficult here. Um Due to, I think, uh, the, the youth academies and the youth systems here, we're not, for some reason, we're not um, developing kids the way I think they should be. Um, whether it is because, you know, it's harder these days, you know, with a fifth, fifth sport in the country, um, obviously funding sometimes isn't there. Uh, you know, our local competition, there's only 12 teams. Um, there's no sort of centre of excellence anymore. So, like, the best young kids don't play against the best young kids. So it, it, it's, a, it's a difficult time for uh, Australian football, I, I personally think. Um, can we, can we you know, achieve and get better players? I, I think we can, but I think we need to, you know, really start taking um, priority in terms of building the game and the brands again um, mm. and, and really focusing on the next sort of generation and how do, how do we get them to the places like you know, like we, like you mentioned with those plays, you know the Harrys and the and the um, the Tim Cahills and the Mark Vadukas of the world. How can we get and replicate more of them? Um, mm. That's the that's the hard thing, you know, because even back, like you said, back in the day, there were so many Australians in England. You know, the the Australians were sort of that I think were the the untapped sources because we we're hardworking, we we're honest, um, and and we, they, we had a good work ethic uh, and we we're cheap. <laughs> where and, and that's what but that's what we were we, we were we were we were cheap you know obviously mm. Leeds had a lot of Aussie players um mm. but now where there's not really that many plays playing at the highest level in England um and for me that that's a bit of a bit, bit of a worry mm. yeah absolutely I mean um there's still a strong Leeds contingent in Oz now though isn't there not Michael Bridges is out there and he's doing some sort of media stuff yeah, and Jacob, look, Jacob, look. Jacob Burns returned back home as well. Yeah, you got Jacob Burns back home. Kansel Sheriff is uh, back home. Um, I think Danny, Danny Milosevic is back home. You know, I, I think wherever you are in the world, there's always Leeds fans or Leeds ex players, um, which makes it extra special. Um, so yeah, look, I, I still see Jacob Burns, Hayden Fox. Um, mm. I saw sort of, I still see these guys when we sort of come up against their team in Perth Glory. Um, so yeah, look, I think, I think, I think the Aussies at, or they've represented Leeds have, have done a great job. No, absolutely. Um, Paddy, I can't thank you enough for your time, mate, um, down in Australia. I'm glad I managed to work out the time difference and get the right day. <laughs> so I was a little bit panicked about it, to be honest. Google has been a, Google has been a great help. Um, so honestly, mate, a massive thanks. Uh, you and you know, you and the family keep safe during this global health crisis that we're going through. And hopefully, when all this clears up and 
we can get back get, get you on again and talk about a lead promotion to the Premier League that yourself and your your teammates then came so close to doing and hopefully this this lead team of now can sort of seal the deal and get that over and done with so yeah mate a, a massive thanks again for your time and uh, yeah just 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 thanks for everything really yeah look same to you guys you know hopefully you guys uh, stay safe because I think at, at the moment um, that's the most important thing you know you, you you and your family's health um and obviously you know we can have a chat maybe in person if you know Leeds get promoted and they they can fly me down i'd be happy to come down <laughs> and um happy to come down and, and, and celebrate with the fans and and the plays and everyone involved at the club because i think again you know for me Leeds is probably by far you know the best club i ever played for with the best fans um and, and again, look, we sometimes we talk about, still get emotional talking about Leeds. So, yeah, I had some great memories um, and long may they continue. Absolutely. Uh, Raggy, Ben, any more points before we uh, we call it a day? Um, no, I just had a couple of questions just, just really yeah. off the top of your head. Kind of, okay. um, be best player you ever played with? Well, at Leeds, is this or at Leeds well, any, or... Any, throughout your career, throughout your career, look, maybe I, I think, in Australia I think... or... Yeah, I, I think Mark Viduka was probably the the best one. Um, I, I was with him with the national team as well. Um, he, he, he was he was special. He was special. Mm. Yeah, brilliant. Even Harry Harry um, Kiel was special. We don't really talk about him. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and best kind of or most influential manager you've ever played under, and why? And, and did they did they kind of? Um, Influence you to become a coach, uh, you know, playing career. Um, geez, I've, I've had a lot. Uh, I, I think I, I think Simon Grayson played a big part, you know, because uh, he, you know he 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 sort of brought me to uh, a club where sort of everything got me restarted again, um, and the way I saw him manage and. You know the the way he training. I saw him training. Obviously, I wanted that. And if it wasn't for him, you know, we wouldn't be here um, with time difference talking about all these great memories. So, yeah, you know, I, I think he, he's got a lot to do with you know my career and obviously um, sort of my next step in in my coaching career. Yeah. Really, really. Yeah. Well, cool. that's it. That's all. All the questions there. Yeah, that, so that's a wrap, Paddy. Again, a massive thanks okay. uh, for your time, mate. Um, keep yourself safe okay. and we'll catch you later. Cheers, Paddy, mate. Cheers. Okay. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Cheers, mate. Yeah, bye. Thanks, thanks,